Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. Here's a question that went viral about nine years ago. A student needs to solve five times three. The student gives the answer of 15 and justifies it as five plus five plus five. 15 is the correct answer, so it would appear the student should get full marks. But instead, the teacher has focused on the working of five plus five plus five. The teacher says this is not correct. The correct answer is three plus three plus three plus three plus three, and the student has one mark deducted from the question. In other words, five times three is equal to five plus five plus five is wrong. This problem caught the attention of nearly everyone. Not only did it appear in the usual math and science blogs, but it also had a political aspect. America was introducing something called Common Core Math, which was a common standard across many states. The Common Core Education curriculum included a lot of new vocabulary and a lot of different techniques to solving problems that parents, teachers, and students had never seen before. This problem seemed emblematic of the confusion. How could the student get the correct answer of 15 and yet still be marked wrong? So what could the teacher possibly have been thinking? In order to understand that, let's take a closer look at the question. In all the bickering about the politics of Common Core, it seemed most of the articles weren't actually focused on the question itself. Let's go through it word for word. The question reads, use the repeated addition strategy to solve five times three. So it might be helpful to see what is meant by the strategy of repeated addition. I looked up the official common core standards and I found this interpretation. Interpret products of whole numbers, e.g. interpret five times seven as the total number of objects in five groups of seven objects each. So let's look at five times seven. That means we have five groups of seven. So we need a sum that involves five groups of seven or seven plus seven plus seven plus seven plus seven. That is what is meant by the repeated addition strategy. So let's apply it to the problem at hand. We have five times three, which should be read as five groups of three. And that would mean this is equal to three plus three plus three plus three plus three. If the problem instead had read three times five, that would be three groups of five, which is equal to five plus five plus five. Now, both of these products will be equal to 15 because five times three is equal to three times five because multiplication is commutative. However, only the left side, five times three is equal to five groups of three would be considered the correct answer by the repeated addition strategy. If you needed to show that you understood the repeated addition strategy, the only possible way you could show that is by saying five times three is equal to five groups of three. By a literal reading of the question, that would be the correct answer. But there was also a question from parents and teachers that why are we teaching this new type of method? In fact, this is not such a new concept. Take a look at the Wikipedia entry for multiplication and you'll see that A times B is equal to A groups of B. It gives an example of three times four, and this will be three groups of four, or four plus four plus four, which equals 12. Three is the multiplier, and four is the multiplicand, and 12 is the product. So by this definition, five would be the multiplier, four would be the multiplicand, and therefore we would have five groups of three. This is exactly the same thing that's being taught in schools, in the repeated addition strategy. So the case should be closed and settled. There should be no controversy about the question. 
unless you don't agree with the strategy of teaching multiplication as repeated addition. In fact, this is a debate in mathematics education whether multiplication should be taught as repeated addition. It was popular around that time in the article by the math guy Keith Devlin with the title, It Ain't No Repeated Addition. This brought out all sorts of math educators discussing whether multiplication should be taught as repeated addition or it should be taught in some other form. But why do we even think about multiplication as repeated addition? I thought it would be useful to give a little bit of a historical context. Euler is considered one of the greatest and most prolific mathematicians of all time. In 1765, he published Elements of Algebra, which was an introduction to algebra. And in the chapter where he introduces multiplication, he writes the following. When there are two or more equal numbers to be added together, the expression of their sum may be abridged. For example, a plus a is the same with 2 times a. a plus a plus a is the same with 3 times a. a plus a plus a plus a is the same with 4 times a, and so on, where times is the sign of multiplication. As he goes on further, he says that 2 times a signifies 2 times or twice a. 3 times a is thrice a. 4 times a is 4 times a. So we have that many groups of the second number. So Euler motivates multiplication by this process of repeated addition, and we have the first number having that many groups of the second number. But if this doesn't satisfy you, let's go back even further. We go to ancient Greece and the mathematician Euclid, who's most famous for his work on geometry, but he also published several books on number theory. In book seven of Euclid's Elements, he gives a definition for multiplication. A number is said to multiply a number when the latter is added as many times as there are units in the former. So we have two numbers. We have a latter number that is added as many times as there are units in the former number. So let's take a look at five times three. The latter number will be three and the former number will be five. So five times three will be equal to five groups of three. Three plus three plus three plus three plus three. This goes back thousands of years. So now let us return to the supposed new math of Common Core. We need to use the repeated addition strategy to solve five times three. I don't care who you are, whether you are Euclid, Euler, or a student today. Using the repeated addition strategy, five times three means five groups of three, and so we have five terms where each term is equal to three. Three plus three plus three plus three plus three. That would be the literal interpretation. If instead you wrote five plus five plus five, that would correspond to three times five, which represents three groups of five. Now all of this explanation may still be insufficient and you may still be angry about that question. I sympathize with you. You're totally welcome to have your opinion about the question and the state of mathematical education. But for me at least, Going through this exercise at least helped me understand why the teacher gave a negative one marking to the student, even though the student gave the correct answer of 15. And it helped me understand that explaining multiplication as repeated addition is not just some new thing that we're learning in schools today. It's a technique that goes back thousands of years to the foundation of mathematics. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.